Peter and John were under threat. They'd been released, but it still wasn't, nothing was resolved. It could get a lot worse real fast. And it says, all together they lifted their voices at once and they began to pray. In verse, it says, this is how they prayed. O sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. I'm going to pause right there. Here's the second prayer principle. When you pray, always start your prayer with praise and worship of God. O oh, sovereign Lord. This is a reminder that God is in control of everything. He is sovereign. No one gets away with anything. Even when bad things happen, it doesn't mean that God has lost his touch. He has lost control. It does not mean that. That God is sovereign. O oh, sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth earth, the sea, and everything in them. When you begin to off, start your prayers with giving the attributes and, and magnifying how great God is, it starts to do something. What it does, it starts to change your focus. It begins to reorient, because when you get hit with a problem, often you're upset, you're afraid, you're worried, you're focusing on what I got to do now. And, you, and a quick God help me, uh, God will hear those prayers, but when you start your prayers with God, how you are almighty God, no matter what happens, you are still sovereign Lord, you are the creator of everything. What it begins to do, it begins to increase your faith. It begins to get your focus off of the problem and onto the Lord God. And that's where, your, that's where your focus needs to be no matter how bad, no matter how challenging, no matter how pressing the need is in your life. When you declare the greatness of God in your life, and the, just simply the greatness of how good and how great God is, it shifts your position if, from the natural to the supernatural. It gets you. Uh, the Bible says in Ephesians. I believe it's 117. That we have been seated with Christ in the heavenlies. That spiritually speaking. Our position spiritually. Is next to Christ in the heavenlies. Can you think of anywhere else. You would rather be. Than seated next to Christ in the heavenlies. The Bible tells us. That's our spiritual position. In Christ Jesus. Seated with him. In the heavenlies. What do you have to fear? What foe would have even a chance? Always begin your prayers with praise and worship. The rest of the verse says, they said, you were the creator of heaven and the sea and everything in them. And you spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor, David, your servant, saying, why were the nations so angry? Why did they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepared for battle and rulers gathered together against the Lord and against the Messiah. Here's the third prayer principle. Always include scripture in your prayers. They're quoting Psalm chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. They're going to the Psalms. They declare the greatness of God. They oriented themselves to the God of the universe, creator of all, not to the problem. And then they begin to quote some scripture in their prayer. You know the greatest and fastest way to not get answers to your prayer? Not pray according to the will of God for your life. Oh, God, please bless this $20, $1.2 billion lotto ticket. Oh, Lord, you don't realize how much I could do for the church. All this great good things. And you go back and you look at all the lottery winners throughout the times. They say 60 to 70 to 80 percent are higher of all marriages that win in great. They end in divorce within a few years. Rather than being a blessing, it became a curse for their personal life. We don't always know what God is protecting us from. Do you know the greatest way, the most surest way 
the most confident way to know you are praying according to the will of God for your life? I promise you this. You pray this way, you'll never go wrong. When you pray according to the Scriptures, when you're praying through the Scriptures, when you're reading the Scriptures and you're praying them back to God and you're using the Scriptures as your guide, as a way of focusing your prayers, when you are praying according to the revealed written Word of God for our lives, the promise and truths contained therein, and you speak this back to the Lord Jesus, as they began doing here, they went right to the Psalms. Now you can find much prayer scriptures throughout the Bible, but one of the most significant is the Psalms. I can't even begin to count the number of times that I've, re I've turned to the Psalms. Not just for comfort and consolation, but to guide my prayers. And in the Psalms, Psalms 103. And now I want you to read it through the lens of not just something David cried out and that it was his prayer. I want you to make it your prayer. When you go to pray this week, and before you lay your needs before the Lord, He knows your needs. He wants you to lay his, your needs before Him. He is the need bearer. He is the supplier. He is all these things. But before you take your needs and say, here they are, you begin first. By turning to Psalm 103. Every time you pray this week, start with Psalm 103. Psalm 103 says, let all that I am praise the Lord. Remember, you have a need. I have a problem. No, you don't start with a problem. You start with praise. Let all that I am, all that I am, praise the Lord. There's a big part of me that's suffering because something bad's happened. I'm stressing out. My husband's this, my wife's that, my children are this, my body's doing, going, you know, this way and that way. And, and, and no, in this moment you go here, let all that I am, not stress, not worry, not think about the problem. Let all that I am right now, praise the Lord. Job said, yet the Lord slay me, yet I am going to serve him. Let all that I am praise the Lord with all my help, my whole heart. God, help me right now. My heart is wandering. Help me right now. There's fear in my heart. Help me right now, God. And you be honest and you open just like this, uh, the psalmist is. He's, he's sincere. God can handle your prayers. He can handle you. God, help me. I want to, but I'm not there. Help me. He knows and he understands. Don't deceive yourselves. Oh, don't come to the Lord with the, you know, public speaking prayer voice. There was a guy when I was at church many years ago, a young pastor, and, and he would st every so often he'd be stand up. He got actually asked to preach a lot because he just he just was a good prayer, you know, but I, he just his voice, you know, and he could heavenly father, we come before you. It just his voice changed, but it was kind of cool. But God doesn't need you to perform in your prayers before him. Be real, be sincere. But sometimes our prayers, you got to fight. Because remember, you have been seated with Christ in the heavenlies. In the spiritual realm, you are secure. But in the natural, you feel anything but. So you have to, you have to teach and you have to preach to the, to the flesh. And the flesh meaning your fears, your doubts, your, what the dilemmas you're going through. And you have to say that that's not who I am. My position is I am seated with Christ in the heavenlies. I will praise the Lord at all times. And with my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. God is great. He is holy. Let all that I am, verse 2, let all that I am praise the Lord. Let all that I am. And may I never forget the good things he does for me. You see how important it is when you're going through the hard times. is to be reminded of his blessings that he's bestowed on over your life. Many of you have been with the Lord a long time. And you know that God has delivered you and delivered you and delivered you and delivered you. And what makes you think he's going to stop now? The devil wants to make you forget about all those 
blessings, about all those victories. God wants to make you forget. God raised Evelyn off the deathbed. She was on a ventilator dying of COVID-19. And God raised her off, pulled her off of it. Now she's back to work and serving the Lord. It is power of prayer, entering into His presence, speaking and declaring, starting your prayers off with declaring how great God is. In your prayers, you should have a whole list. I tell you, I could ask, I won't ask him because he'll take over the preaching. I only got four minutes left. But uh, if I asked Tony to come up here, he could give you 10 or 12 or 15 or 20 names of God as he has revealed himself through the scriptures. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is, what is Jehovah Jireh? He is the God, our provider. He is El Shaddai. He is the all-sufficient one. He is Jehovah Rapha. What is Rapha? Yes, He is God, my healer. And when you're sick in body, when you've been given a diagnosis that the doctor's saying it starts to put fear in your life and in your heart and your thoughts, Jehovah Rapha should come and well up within you and you begin to declare, you, I serve God, Jehovah Rapha. He has revealed Himself as the God who heals me. And you turn to the scriptures and you begin, before you begin to even lay your request before the Lord, you begin to declare how great and awesome he is. And then you should begin to pray the scriptures. And praying the scriptures is not simply the drop and plop method. You know, you, okay, where are we at now? Let me find a verse. There, that's not going to get you very far. It's not going to get you anywhere, anywhere at all. You've been, most of you here that I see, I know most of you, if not all of you. And you've been around the block. You've been with the Lord a long time. And by now, there should be scriptures that you have with you that you, when you're going through this problem, what are, how does God address this in the Word? When you're going through financial difficulties, what has God has said about finances in the Word? When you're going through heartache, hurt, loneliness, whatever it is, what has God's Word told me about these situations? He's already known them beforehand. And when you begin to pray, it's not just, God, help me. You're going to the scriptures. And you're declaring the promises of God's word concerning those problems and those situations in your life. And when you begin to do that, that's going to orient you. It's going to increase your faith. And you need that faith increased. In the scripture, the word of God, the faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And when you go to the scriptures that God has already given us that address the problems and the situations in your life, it's going to increase your faith. And the faith is called, faith in, the, uh, in, um, in Ephesians 6 is the shield of faith. And that shield of faith is for protection, for the darts of the enemy. And when our faith, or when our shield is small and weak, then the enemy has, has easy access to pierce us with the temptations and the sufferings and the, all the things that come with that. Always include scripture in your prayers. What scriptures do you include in your prayers that address the problems and the needs that you are going through in your life? It's time to start building up your faith. It's time to start adding to your faith these scriptures. Where has God addressed this in the word? We've addressed three of these principles the first one was they simply went to the church. They went to their body of believers. And if you don't have a home church, if you don't have people that you know and that you know love you, and that can come alongside you and pray, then you need to find one. Then it says they, they lifted up their voices and they began to praise God, Almighty God, Omniscient God, Creator of heaven and earth. And it began to change, they orient their, the situation, and then they went into the prayer, and then in the prayer, they, they, they went to the Psalms. They began to quote the scriptures.